celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, August 7, 2019, and here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, it's mixed over there. Up a little bit in Europe, mixed over here in the States. Gold, bada boom, bing, bop, 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 ba dee, bop, bop, bop. Yeah, and over there in uh, Bitcoin land, that's up too. Oil, down. What's going on? Dow closes little change after rally back from 589 points down. Hey, you think that plunge protection team came in there to rig the markets? No, I do. Anyway, they had a wild set session. And here's what's going on. Why is gold going up? Central banks around the world are surprising markets with aggressive rate hikes. You know what that is. Bullshit. You got it. Bullshit. Surprising who? Surprising the people who didn't see anything coming? We've been saying this is going to happen, and that's why gold prices are going up. You ready? The Reserve Bank of India cut rates by 35 basis points for the fourth straight meeting this year. Bank of Thailand, oh yeah, they cut rates 25 basis points. And the Reserve Bank, you got to be reserved, Bank of New Zealand. 50 basis point cuts. It's a global slowdown. It has nothing to do with trade, tariffs, or anything. It has to do with that monetary methadone that kept the addicted bull and the bullshit markets running and propping up the economies with phony juice that only went to the 1%. The facts are there. Germany's bond yield plummeted to fresh lows on Wednesday, while the yield, you ready for this, of the 30-year bond tumbled to an all-time low of minus 0.11%. Yields in UK, New Zealand, and the Netherlands have also touched Record lows in recent days, and that's why people are going into gold, because you can't get money in any of these, quote, safe haven assets. Again, we were the first, the first to call the gold bull run on June 6, 2019. And today, gold closed just a tiny bit below that $1,500 an ounce mark. And I said this was going to happen. The downside risk, as I see it, for gold is minimal. Watch it go toward that 2000 mark. And remember what I said. You never know. There are wild cards out there, whether they're man-made or made by nature. And there's no wilder card than the Trump card. And that Trump card keeps getting played. Markets rebound is China's steadiest currency. This is today's headlines from yesterday's markets. They're not purposely lowering their currency, their renminbi. China is the biggest importer of oil in the world. Oil is based in petrodollars. You think they want their currency to go way down so they got to spend a lot more for oil and energy? It's going down because their economy's going down. Don't believe me? Why don't we believe some facts, folks? China's firms using IOUs to stay afloat. Yep. Private businesses are short of cash They're $200 billion in IOUs known in the world as dry world of finance as commercial acceptance bills are floating around the Chinese financial system according to government data. All right? And a lot of that debt, it's in dollars. Asia turmoil hits hotel bookings. The greatest depression is on the way. It's just beginning. Retail. Hotels. 
and real estate agents. That's going to be a tough one. They're going to get hit very hard. Stock traders expect choppy waters. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Yep. Here we go. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, UBS Group, AG, and other firms are warning investors that markets are likely to get a lot choppier through the rest of the summer and fall. I guess they've been reading the Trends Journal. No, maybe they're tuning into Trends in the News. This is old news. And that's what you get when you tune into the mainstream news. You get what happened when you tune into the Trends in the news and subscribe to the Trends Journal, you get what's going to happen. We're way ahead of these cats, but they're all admitting what we've been saying. Oil dives 4.7% on fears of global slowdown. And very important, U.S. crude stockpiles have built way beyond expectations has nothing to do with trade wars. You think the people aren't using gasoline because they're afraid of a trade war? And when they give you that kind of line, you know what it is. Bullshit. You got it. Services gloom fuels German recession fears. Financial Times. The pace of German expansion slowed more in July than estimated. German industry expects output to shrink over the next three months and then beyond that. We're talking Germany. That's why I'm talking about this. We're not talking about Bangladesh or Indonesia. We're talking about the strongest economy in Europe, and it doesn't look bright. And that's why gold is shining higher and glowing more because they're going to keep pumping in more cheap dough to artificially prop up the markets. U.S. credit card interest rates hit 25-year high. Isn't that great? Yeah, let's thank Jimmy Carter and all the rest of them that let them use these usury rates to really screw us. Now, let me get this straight. Mortgage rates are down way low right now, but credit card rates go way up high because the banksters are running, ruining, and screwing with all of us. This is, this is outright thievery. These rates should not be able to go up more than 5 or 6% tops. That's where they should be. But these greedy people got to make more money and steal it from you. The greatest depression is on the way. You may lose your business, your job, your home. And with the Great Depression, people are very depressed. We're going to see a lot of loss of life. So prepare now. Barney's files for Chapter 11. This is a 96-year-old company. I'm mentioning this because from the top to the bottom, retail is going to start washing out. Bulk of Trump's U.S. farm aid goes to biggest and wealthiest farmers. Yeah, no kidding. What a surprise. And it's not only Trump. I used to write this. I wrote about it in my book. Trends 2000. The farm industry back in the 1950s. Get big or get out. And that's what they've done. That's what this country's become. Nothing more than greatness for the multinationals. That's who against the trade deals. Oh, that's why they want a weak dollar, so they can export more. What do I give a shit what you export? I want a strong dollar so it doesn't cost me more to buy things. No, we have to help the multinationals, Salenti. That's all that counts. And talking about the bigs being in control, former Defense Secretary James Mattis returns to General Dynamics Board of Directors. And here's the way they say it. This is a CNBC story. Quote, Jim is a thoughtful, deliberate, and principled leader with a proven track record of selfless service to our nation. This is their CEO said in a statement. We are honored to have him on the board. Mattis previously served on the General Dynamics Board of Directors before joining the Trump administration in 2017 to become 
the Secretary of Defense. It's one big club. It's what Eisenhower warned us of. The military-industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. Lovely Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, as he was called. Here are some of the quotes from the man who was thoughtful, deliberate, and principled. Quote, it's quite fun to shoot them, you know. It's a hell of a hoot. It's fun to shoot some people. How about this one? I come in peace. I didn't bring artillery. But I'm pleading with you, with tears in my eyes, if you fuck with me, I'll kill you all. Hey, maybe that's the line that those sick Mattis type sons of bitches killed all those people this week in Dallas, excuse me, that killed the people in El Paso and Dayton. You know, if you fuck with me, I'll kill you all. What makes them any different than Mad Dog Battis? Nothing. Nothing. And hey, he is a man that we should honor and salute. Here you go. Moving on to some international news. Rwanda offers refuge to migrants detained in Libya. Isn't that wonderful? Migrants detained in Libya, a country destroyed by Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Susan Rice, Samantha Powers, Sarkozy, the slimer from France, little Cameron with a boy with no cojones over there in England. Look at the murder they commit. What makes them any different than the murderers in El Paso or Dayton? Nothing. Only in your mind. China warns U.S. against missile deployment in Asia. China has said that the intermediate range missiles stationed by the United States in Asia Pacific region will be seen by Beijing as an offensive nature. But the United States says, hey, we could do anything we want. Don't you know who we are? We murder people anywhere, start wars for any reason we want. How dare you tell us what to do? Could you imagine if China had missiles up in Canada and Mexico? Oh, that'd be a different story, Salenti. New Delhi reopens old wounds in Kashmir. Yep, they're scrapping a long-standing constitutional provision that granted unique autonomy to different regions there. When all else fails, they take you to war. What did I just say? In India, they lowered interest rates for the fourth time in a row. They're going to get the people's minds not only off the lousy economy, but the weather and the droughts and the shortage of water. That's going on in India. Stripping of special rights from Kashmir sparks uproar. In response, Pakistan said, after what has happened in the Indian parliament, India has shut the door on peacefully resolving the Kashmir dispute. Oh, yeah, great. Two countries with nuclear weapons aimed at each other. It'll be a lovely day. More war on the horizon. We'd better occupy peace because there won't be a piece of us left if we let these crazy people continue to take the path that they're on. OccupyPeace.com, put your money where your heart and your mind are. Ah, talking about no minds and little hearts and little dicks. Britain joins U.S. to escort ships in Gulf. The United Kingdom will join the United States Initiative to protect ships in the Straits of Hormuz. Rest of Europe doesn't want to go along with this. You know what this is? This is nothing more than pure bullshit. You got it. Bullshit. It's more American aggression. Can you imagine if there were Iranian ships, Chinese ships? We're going to watch out what goes through that Panama Canal. Yeah, we don't want Americans going near them ships. What a different story that would be. U.S. monitors, China tankers, suspected of Iran breach. They were suspected. Oh, yeah, and the British stole that Iranian ship 
filled with oil that was suspected to go to uh, Syria. And they suspected Iran of sabotaging those other vessels in the Persian Gulf about a month ago. No proof. Ramping up warfare. The Trump administration is tracking tanker movements linked to China's biggest state-run oil company amid signs that the vessels are helping to transport Iranian crude to China in defiance of U.S. sanctions against Tehran. What right does the United States have to put sanctions on a foreign country like this who's done nothing to us? Beijing ramps up rhetoric on Hong Kong. Very important story. We're the only ones saying it. All these protests in Hong Kong, they're going nowhere. Beijing has 1.4 billion people in China that they're running. They got about 7 million people in Hong Kong. I'm not really good at numbers, but figure that one out. Washington orders international embargo on Venezuela and threatens invasion. That's right, we got this Bolton, B.S. Bolton, our national security advisor, and the Trump administration putting more sanctions on Venezuela. This is outright economic warfare. They're in terrible times and terrible straits already. This is only going to make it worse. U.S. seizes cargo ship trying to deliver food to Venezuela. Yep, how about that for a naval blockade? By those lousy Iranians, how could they stop that food going? Oh, that's not the Iranians, that's the Americans stopping food in to go feed starving people. But that's all right. America could kill, starve, murder, and atom bomb anybody that they want. Yeah, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. Oh, you forgot that one, huh? Okay. French-backed Libyan militia airstrike kills 42 civilians. Libyan militia airstrike kills 42 civilians in the country that was the richest country in Africa, where the people had more rights, more benefits than anywhere else, but again destroyed, as I said earlier, by the sickos in the United States, England, and France with the help of NATO. And now look at the conditions there. They've destroyed that country and made the entire region much worse. And on to some news that will warm you up. Record July temperatures put focus on climate change. Global temperatures in July were the warmest month recorded. Isn't that great? This isn't climate change. It's planet destruction. It's only part of it. Deforestation in Amazon surges. That's great. You don't need them forests. And a quarter of humanity faces looming water crisis. It's only going to get much worse. Oh, and by the way, when the Greatest Depression hits, you'll still make money selling water. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.